everyone, welcome back. This is update 2 of building a CDX slash LEGO 4D roller coaster. So let's get right into it and start where we last left off. I don't really have a good idea of what I'm going to do for the second half, so I'm going to share two layouts of what I think could work out. My first idea was two consecutive raven turns, so basically a big figure eight, but that idea could be a little tricky with all this track taking up space in the center. So my next idea will try to avoid all that track. I'm going to make this a turn that transitions from sit down to inverted and make the first element a large cobra roll. I drew up a little plan just so I have a good idea of what I'm going to be building. And I'm really excited for this cobra roll element because I'm going to give it a very unique set of supports. So let's start by working on this really cool turn element. I'm going to quickly copy this support two more times. While I'm building that, I want to talk to you about my recent trip to Busch Gardens Tampa. The only parks I've been to is Kings Island and Cedar Point, so Busch Gardens Tampa was a completely new experience for me. I got some fun pictures and videos from the trip, and my favorite ride there was obviously Iron Gwazi. Iron Gwazi actually takes the number one for me, like even better than Steel Vengeance. I really like intensity on roller coasters, which is why I find Iron Gwazi just a smudge better than Steel Vengeance. My idea for this element was for the train to flip twice in one element. So it's going to flip 180 degrees, do that little turn, and then flip again and go down the drop into the raven turn. And it will probably give a lot of opportunity for the seats to spin. I'm now working on the lower part of the element into that transition with the cobra roll and made sure to line up the bottom so the cobra roll will be nice and symmetrical. Later in the video, you will see that this part of the ride probably became one of the most finicky sections of track. The train would race through very fast and it would actually rip itself apart. The damage would get so bad that the trains wouldn't even make the turn element. So I had to go in off camera and just keep testing and reinforcing that section. And this is also around the time where I was running out of pieces. There was a bunch of problems popping up and they all seemed to plague this bottom section and the cobra roll. But eventually, after a lot of time and tests, I got the coaster working, for the most part. It would sometimes stall, but usually I would just have to go in and readjust a few supports that came loose from the stress of the trains. Now that this element is done, let's get started on the cobra roll. The supports I built for the cobra roll are very similar to the ones I built on my Mac Hyper coaster. I made the supports form a triangle so that it has much more strength as the train rolls through. I severely underestimated how many supports I actually needed for this element. During the test, the whole structure was shaking a lot, which definitely contributed to the supports shaking loose. This whole structure will hold up the top of the cobra roll. I'm going to put in a beam here and start to form the track around the supports. I originally wanted this element to be a cobra roll but it ended up being more of like a very tall wave turn. From the test, the train was losing a lot of speed, so I just went with the easy option of raising the track up even more, which sadly got rid of the cobra roll aspect of the element. Now I'm supporting all that floating track, and right here I run completely out of the support pieces. The element isn't done yet, and it, half of it is still floating, so I need to figure out an alternative way to support it. But first, let's give it a test to see how we're doing speed-wise. I first did a normal drop and it did not make it. I then even tried pushing the trains and it also stalled. Here you can see the damage caused by the trains. The supports came right off, so I'm going to need to go back in and fix some things up. Here's the second round of testing. The bottom part is strengthened, so hopefully the trains will roll better. The push test did work out, so there is a chance that this could work. With those tests out of the way, we can now finish up the coaster. For my first time building a cobra roll, it's looking pretty awesome. I now just need to finish up the half loop connecting the launch to the rest of the element. This is probably the most tricky support and the most important. 
the helix gets in the way of building a nice structural support. So I went with this floating design that connects right to the structure. And that is the Cobra Roll complete. All I need to do now is finish up the launch. I'm going to be using the same design as my Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast Coaster. I need to keep in mind that the trains are going to need a lot more speed, not just the speed required to clear the first element. Here I put in the chain and then all I need to do now is put in the rubber band. So let's test the launch. It's been a while since I've made one of these so this is going to require a lot more tests. Something I wasn't expecting was that the chain breaks a lot. I think this is due to the train being too heavy because this launch design worked on my previous coasters before with normal trains. I tried putting the trains further on the launch track so that it would clear the chain more easily. After a lot more tests, I realized that this launch needed a redesign. It is not giving enough speed to the train, so instead I'm going to go for a slingshot design. I use this design very rarely because it's very unrealistic and you can't automate it. Basically, it's just a simple slingshot using a long string of rubber bands. The benefit to using this design is that it delivers a lot more power based on how many rubber bands you use. The consequences are that I will have to manually load the train onto the launch. From that test, you can see exactly the amount of power that the launch generates, but yet it's still not enough to make the full layout. I'm going to try to make the launches more similar so that the train will have the same amount of speed for each test. Luckily, I can just reuse the ratchet system and make a sort of door to keep the trains in the loaded position. So let's test it out. That L piece will keep the trains locked in position. All I need to do is release it with the red lever, which allows that L piece to spin. And I made it so that there's just enough clearance that the train can go right over the L piece when it's down. So I'm going to keep testing and adjusting the rubber bands till I find a speed that works. This is about the time when I realized that the supports for the Cobra Roll is just not cutting it. So I'm going to need to beef it up and add more beams. I'm going to get a little fancy and add a few more beams connecting this upper part track. So that should be enough supports for the Cobra Roll. Let's keep testing and see how the train reacts. Here I add some triangle supports to that one floating section, so let's hope that will help the trains keep their speed. After putting in slow motion, you can see exactly how much the structure shakes. No wonder the supports keep falling apart. Sadly, I couldn't find a really good solution to this problem, so I'm just going to have to go back in and fix any damages after each test. I also raised up the top part of the Cobra Roll in a desperate attempt to help the train gain more speed. After getting tests that are so close to clearing that second element, I finally got one that worked. We are now on the final stretch. All I need to do is put in the brakes. I had to get a little creative with the design of the brakes since the trains are larger than what I usually work with. Basically those two rubber pieces brush up against the bottom of the train slowing the train down. And they can be released using a motor which allows the train to naturally roll back to the station. So I'm going to put in a sensor and motorize the whole thing, and I'll show you the coaster when it's done.
thank you so much for watching. Don't worry if you thought that last part showing off the coaster was a little short. I'm going to be making a whole nother video just showcasing the coaster and watching it run. So definitely stay tuned for that. Goodbye.